Good morning, Facebook friends. Helen Arcantu here, CEO of the YWCA of Northern New Jersey. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I am so happy to have some time with you on this uh, summer morning uh, in North Jersey. For That's where we're seated. I don't know where you're seated, but we're happy that you could make the time to join us. Um, this is a, a really important conversation we're having this morning, so I'm so grateful that you could join. And this is also something that's very um, you know, at the core of our mission at the YW, and I know um, at the core of the values and the um, focus for our guests today. Um, uh, and so with that, I'd like to start, and I'll tell you more about her in a moment. I'd like to welcome, um, and so grateful that she could make time in her busy schedule. Uh, this, this is the season now that the budget is done, that there's a little bit of breathing. Um, so, uh, um, but with that, we would like to welcome Assemblywoman Shanique Spett who is joining us today um, to talk about period poverty. Good morning and welcome Assemblywoman. Good morning, thank you for having me. So with that, let me uh, you know share for those of you that are not aware, because sometimes we think that this issue is something that happens in another country. Um, we don't always know and, and understand that this is an issue right here in the United States, let alone right here in New Jersey, let alone right here in your county, let alone right here in your town. Um, this is a very local issue that sometimes we don't even understand or connect with. And that's what our, our goal here today is to um, educate you further. We've had this conversation on YWTV before. We will be talking about it again. But we want to make sure that we understand that this is a local issue. Um, period poverty is defined as the lack of menstrual products, hygiene facilities, waste management, and education um, it affects many women, as we said, globally, but it is, again, is very much a local issue and it causes physical, mental and emotional challenges for the individuals that are dealing with it. Um, the stigma sometimes surrounds periods, even that further presents us talking about this issue. Um, you know, that is kind of one of those, you know, periods, menopause, you know, these are a lot of conversations and, around women's health that are very veiled. Um, and, you know, we talk privately about in, in families um, and, you know, in circles, if at all. We even know in some families and circles it is not discussed. And so as a result, really addressing and dealing with this issue becomes even more complex, um, you know, for us. And even more so why it's important to share the conversation and make sure that, um, you know, there is no shame around this conversation. There is um, no secrecy or uh, no reason not to be talking about it publicly um, in all company. Um, so with that, we want to make sure that everyone understands that like all other forms of poverty, period poverty can be debilitating. It, um, again, has a very um, a strong emotional, physical and mental health component to it. And more than half of the world's population menstruate. Um, and as a result of it, you know, um, products to be able to, um, you know, to support menstruation are needed. And so with that, this is everybody's business. And as I said, we're so grateful that the Assemblywoman could join us today. She is with District 29. Um, and she herself has made us a kind of a personal mission to bring focus and attention um, we are always so grateful when public figures and civic leaders and, and our elected officials really take on these matters um, and give them life um, and, you know, uh, because it, it, they, they are happening, but people do not know. And so we are so grateful. Um, promoting mental health through her legislative provisions and community action obviously is a real focus for the Assemblywoman. Um, let me tell you a little bit about her in case you don't know her. Um, if she's not from your district, you may not be as familiar with the great work that she's done. But as I said, she is a representative of the 29th Legislative District, and she has been in the New Jersey General Assembly since 2018. We are so grateful to have her there. Um, she is a resident of Newark. Uh, she graduated from Lincoln University with a Master of Arts in Human Services. She was an officer of the Essex County Sheriff's Office, and she was first elected to Newark Public Schools Advisory Boards in 2007 um, and served as the board's vice chair from 2007 to 2012 and as an aide to Senator Teresa Ruiz from 20, 2009 to 2010. 
Um, she also has dedicated ser her service to advocate for the needs of vulnerable populations and assist underserved um, individuals in the greater Newark community. She has a relentless desire to extend her reach throughout the state of New Jersey and surrounding areas, which is why she is so impactful in her seat as an assemblywoman and a champion for sure of women's health, um, which we definitely need, um, uh, could not need more urgently in this day and age for sure. Um, and so with that, uh, and there's so much more, obviously, that, that you, you know, do with all the, the impact with your work, but we're so grateful that you could make some time today to talk with us about this issue. So, so let's start with you telling us a little bit about why are you so passionate about women's health issues um, and how did this particular issue become an area of focus for you? Thank you so much. And thank you again for having me. Um, well, I've always been uh, passionate about uh, women's health, uh, menstrual health. Menstrual health actually just started tying in within the last uh, year or so. And I've always been an advocate in regards to um, uh, maternal health. Um, just so just to give you a little bit of background in regards to like myself and my, my family. My mom died when I was 18 years old. She was 43 years old. She had cervical cancer. Um, and she did not have access to proper health care. And I know if she had access to proper health care, she probably would still be here to care on today. My, um, my husband, mom, mother, he, she passed maybe about four, three or four days after she gave birth to him. Um, the after birth was left inside of her. So which caused an infection and caused her to pass away. And he never, uh, met his mom. Um, and so when you talk about maternal health and you talk about uh, women's health, um, mm -hmm. those issues have a direct impact on my life and my husband's life. And, you know, as growing up, you know, in an urban neighborhood and seeing, you know, other women and uh, other family members pass away at a young age because of having lack of access to proper health care, um, yes. to me, is that's that should not be so. Um, so. Over the last year or so, we we have been doing um, legislation in regards to menstrual health, right? And so, as you know, in our state, we our state is the fourth highest state in the country with the um, highest amount of Black women who dies from yes. uh, maternal mortality, right? And so, our office has been trying to you know dissect th certain things. Okay, well, why are we dying at a higher rate? You know what's going on and we keep passing legislation however we still are dying at a higher rate and we are trying to do the best that we can when it comes to uh maternal health um but we also once we started looking at it and having more conversation about it we started talking about menstrual health because I, I, my mindset and my team here in my office and thank god i have a great team i said how can we continue to talk about maternal health and women's health if we're not talking about menstrual health Menstrual health is we some some girls start uh, menstruating at almost at the age of like nine years old, um, and I grew up in an era when your period started. It wasn't really a conversation about it. Um, I the, it wasn't a conversation about it. It was more so okay, make sure you have a pad or just you know go in the bathroom and change yourself or um, if you're bleeding heavy, if you have severe cramps, everything is normal, but we didn't sit down and have a conversation about it. Um, if you ran out of pads, you ran out of pads. That's just it. It wasn't no, like, let's hurry up and get to the store. It wasn't just always accessible in our household. So we had to make do with whatever, what we had. Mm -hmm. um, so we realized that, you know, we can talk about all these issues, but I just, we felt that menstrual health is the core of possibly a lot of issues that women are faced with and that we don't have conversations about. And I'm not sure why uh, menstrual health, when we talk about the word period, why it's like a taboo topic and everybody mm -hmm. runs away from it. And to me, we, like you said earlier, half of the population is affected by it. And at the end of the day, I always say, I got here because of somebody's menstrual cycle, uh, yes. <laughs> you know? Um, and so that's a, that's a lot where my passion came from. So not only did we talk about, you know, the access to, uh, to the products and, and the products of, you know, for young girls, for grown women, we also started to just dissect every 
thing when it came to uh, your period and the education on a period, mm -hmm. uh, the, the disorders when it comes to your period. And, you know, because we oftentimes we just don't know. We just go with the flow of this is your period, deal with it and move on. And that's what I've, I've dealt with majority of all my life. And I have a 16 year old daughter as we speak now. And I don't want her to grow up with the same mindset of this is your period, deal with it and just move on. So, you know, I want her to, you know, embrace her period. Um, and if she needs to know anything more about her period, she, you know, I'm there to let her know because I didn't have that for anybody to like, let me know this is what's going on with your body. No, you got your period. That's it. Keep moving on. So, yes, yes. Well, I, I just, again, I just thank you so much for, you know, really opening up this conversation. Um, you know, as I shared, this is not the first time the YWCA has brought this conversation through our YWTV and through our work. Um, we've had the director of the Flow Initiative, um, you know, on our show and um, uh, Project Local Access. And we um, actually are and we'll be talking a little bit about this more at the end are now a free period care package distribution site, um, partnering with the, the great work of the Flow Initiative, which we'll put in the comments the link there too, because it's really important for our, our community to know about and support important initiatives like that that are happening in the state. Um, and I also just coincidentally, um, you know, tomorrow we have um, Marie Carl of um, the Partnership for Maternal and Child Health of Northern New Jersey on the show. Um, wow. She's a, a friend and she's also, um, you know, this is a conversation too that we've been having. We've had we've had um, black women on sharing their stories of what happened to them in childbirth that um, obviously is unacceptable. And here in the state of New Jersey, everybody should be outraged at where we rate nationally on this issue. And, um, you know, it's something that we have to continue to be plugged into legislation, to supporting funding and culture shift um, in medical communities um, to understand that that's the only way. Um, and let me also put in the plug that we also need to keep looking at racism as a public health issue so that funding right. does get um, put appropriately towards these issues and not looked at as a social problem because this is not a social problem. These are urgent public health issues that we are talking about here. Um, so going back to the, the the period conversation, which again, I so appreciate them. I, 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 I have a nine-year-old uh, daughter um, myself and, you know, still in all communities, you know, um, you know, we're not talking to our girls about periods to begin with early enough. Um, we're kind of waiting for it to happen in most cases, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, can be traumatizing, you know, for a child not to be prepared for it. So I really appreciate that you're working to create a culture where, um, you know, we are able to be talking about this early and kind of preparing, um, you know, and uh, in communities, though, and where individuals um, you know, don't have the products to go along with, you know, the, the, you know, once, you know, the, you know, young women start to menstruate and then obviously over into adulthood, um, you know, I, I can't even imagine um, what, uh, you know, how that shuts you down from, from a, from an ability to function in our community. And also when we think about, and you obviously, you know, so appropriately pointed out, you know, we see this even more so in communities of color, you know, for sure. And um, as it is, our communities of color are dealing with racial trauma, are dealing with systemic racism, you know, are already um, uh, weighted down with so many other, uh, you know, unacceptable issues than to also have a young woman not be able to come out of her house because she's menstruating and doesn't have products um, is, is, you know, really unbelievable. And, and I, and I have to say, you know, I, I'm an adjunct professor at Montclair state and uh, for many, many years now, and probably about 15 years ago, one of my students did a project on this conversation, but about in, in her, in her home country in Africa. And at the time when she raised it, the whole class was shocked that this happened. Um, but 
part of being shocked about that happened was opening everyone's eyes that this is happening here in New Jersey as well. And I think Paul, I see one of our guests, Paul, is saying so glad that we're talking about this. Um, you know, this is so important, again, as we say, to stop the shroud of secrecy around periods and the needs and how debilitating it is when we don't have these products. So with that assembly woman, I know, and I also know from our conversations with um you know, the leadership at the Flow Initiative and, and um, you know, our work in this area, you've been instrumental in so much legislation and focus around this area. Can you talk to us a little bit about the work that you've done specifically in that realm because you have that ability to, you know, affect change there? So um, we, we have a, pa a package, a wide package of uh, bills. Um, so I think it's about 14 packages of bills. Um, one of the one of the bills is um, products in schools. Um, another bill we have is products in homeless shelters. Also, we have another bill products in higher education. We have another bill also um, it pertains pertaining to SNAP benefits covering uh, menstrual products. Um, because what I do understand, especially with that bill, that bill is in very important to me in a low income mm -hmm. area parent and uh, uh, families that's receiving SNAP benefits. Um, that would help uh, families out so much if, if SNAP benefits was able to cover just the menstrual um, products uh, monthly, because you have some women that possibly have three or four girls and their self that's ministrating yeah. in a home all at once. So I can't even imagine, or you can't imagine the cost yes. um, that that would be. We also have um, another bill. It's it's actually it's um, uh, excused absent. It's an excused absence bill. And what this yeah. bill does, I mean, a lot of people say, well, why would you excuse uh, kids from school um, that to get their period? We have all been getting our period um, for years. And like I told someone before, we've all been getting our period, but it's always been a, quite a few individuals that was absent every month, possibly from school, that possibly did not have the products from school. But th what this bill would do is what girls that has menstrual disorders, it would give them actually an excuse um, absence or two because they're actually bleeding too heavy, um, have severe cramping, cramping. And if you have like endometriosis, oftentimes they have to um, go to the hospital. Um, sometimes they're in the hospital a day or two. Um, and it's just so many different things that they possibly deal with. And they're being marked uh, absent from school um, on a monthly basis because they have this disorder. And the crazy part is a lot of them don't know that they have this disorder. I, I was just going to say, I, I'm so grateful that you raised endometriosis and and, and, and and that piece of it, because honestly, and, and I'm making note to the behind the scenes YWTV staff, we really need to do a series of shows around endometriosis, because that is a whole other um, a whole nother issue that really does keep women from, um, you know, leading, uh, you know, active and, um, you know, uh, you know, active full lives because they're dealing with it. And 100 percent, you are correct. People don't even know what it is because, again, there's such a shroud of secrecy around this right. that people would just say, yeah, this is it. This is what you have to deal with. Don't talk about it. Just deal with right. it. Right. And, right. and that it does ripple effect into being able to be in classes, being able to be at work um, right. and from a productivity perspective. And again, if you don't have proper health care access, which we know happens for sure in some communities, uh, you know, in under resourced communities, especially um, then then individuals are not able to get the note. Right. That, right. that would exactly. be able to give you that excuse. So. Um, again, the inequity here is so multi-layered and so important for us to be talking about. So thank you for sharing that. So just, you have, yes, please. Just to highlight, just to go back on that um, note, um, I've ran into quite a few uh, women that have endometriosis and they are adults now. Some of them, um, uh, I've also heard that well, when they was younger, going to the doctor, the doctor would say, oh, maybe you have an STD or maybe it's this but not properly diagnosing them. And it took them years to get diagnosed. And so, you know, endometri so when you, con when you connect endometriosis and you connect uh, maternal health, endometriosis also affects your, um, and, uh, birth, yeah, birth. yeah and for, you, you may become infertile. Fertility, so, yes. Yeah, so we've been um, uh, working on uh, legislation in regards to preservation of eggs for women that have um, endometriosis as well to 
you know, just see what we can do for that group of uh, women. Because we talk about periods and you talk about endometriosis, endometriosis and periods. This is one thing that our state really don't talk about. And we have mm -hmm. to talk about it and educate women on it. But I'm and again, and no, no, I actually appreciate saying that because, again, I think you're really highlighting the the layers and the complexity of of this issue that there there's there's lots of um, you know pieces to it for sure. Um, but getting back to and and we will keep talking about it. I look forward to having you back to keep talking about the work that you're doing in this area. And again, I, I can't echo enough um, you know my gratitude on behalf of our organization and the women that we you know represent and the families and that we represent in the community that you've kept all of these issues, you know, at the focus of your work. Um, and again, I also just want to make a plug here for a different conversation, but important one, folks. This is why it's important to make sure that we have women in office, um, in elected seats, in appointed seats, in places that these matters can be legislated, can be supported, because um, they're not um, white men that are um, uh, putting these issues forward and supporting our communities, whether the women look like me or look like the assembly woman, you know, uh, no one, these are not at the top of anyone else's list, you know, for sure. So, um, you know, this is this, let me just go back to saying that to plant the seed again, why this is so important. And especially now as we're getting ready, we're in a get out to vote season. That's something you should be thinking about when you're casting your ballot, um, that your values, your health decisions are all going to be considered by the person that you're putting in office for sure. So with that Assemblywoman, so let's talk a little bit about the legislation that we have out there. How can we help with that piece of it? And then let's talk about how we can help with other pieces of it separately. But how can we help with that piece of it? You know, we have a great engaged um, you know, membership and following at the YWCA. What what should we be doing to make sure that th these efforts move forward? So when it comes to our state and when it comes to getting legislation pushed, oftentimes, so it's 120 legislators, right? So you have 80 in the Assembly, you have 40 in the Senate. Um, and, you know, everybody has bills, right? But in order to get the attention of the legislators and so they will understand that this is an important issue is to possibly do a petition or start emailing all of all of the legislators offices to let them know this is important to us and this is what we need moved here in our state and this basically affects half of the population here in our state because when you don't when you don't have people talking about it or supporting it they feel like oh it, it may not be that important to everyone or um we don't really have to push it because they're not people are not pushing it or talking about it too much. So we can kind of like stand down. Mm -hmm. um, so our, like our office is already coming up with a strategy of saying, of, of knowing that what we have to do when it comes to media, when it comes to um, uh, email and petitions and letting other legislators know that this conversation is not just important to my office, it's important to half of our state. And hopefully not even just half of our state, because I keep saying that it's also important that men understand how these issues affect women as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And for our, our viewers too, um, we do encourage you to stay connected to the YW on our social media and make sure you're on our mailing list and, and following um, our website. Um, we will have an upcoming advocacy alert coming out. And this is one of the issues in these package of bills we will be highlighting as something that we should be thinking about, um, you know, uh, supporting because again, exactly as the Assemblywoman said, um, this affects all of us. Um, and, you know, even if some of the issues that you're talking about because of, you know, your um, privilege, you know, doesn't affect you personally, um, it should outrage you that any other child or woman, you know, in our community has to struggle with this issue. And, um, and we should be linking arms, standing together, you know, around this for sure. So please, um, you know, stay connected. We will be um, sharing some more information about this for you. Um, so also let's talk about, as, as I shared, the YWCA um, recently became a distribution site for free period care, pra um, care packages. And we are working alongside with nonprofits like the Flow Initiative and Project Local Access. 
Um, and we're also partnering with the Assemblywoman to coordinate some other awareness events um, around collecting more products. Um, I know right now we have a, a, a local women's networking group that's doing a collection and we very often get community groups asking us how they can help. This is one of the ways that you can help. Um, so please talk to us about community efforts and um, from the other way that we can all help and stay educated and stay active to uh, combat this issue. Um, just so, and just to plug in, my office is actually becoming a period hub. So um, especially during the summer, we have products here in the office. Um, so if, not even just during the summer, but during yes, all year, year round. round. So if girls need products, they are able to either if, contact our office or come to the office and pick up a bag. We have pre-made bags for um, for everyone. So I, I'm probably the first uh, period hub office uh, here in the States um, as a legislator, and I'm proud of that. So um, just to let you know. Um, and just I think organizations need to just continue to have conversations around this. Um, and just continue to support each other around this conversation and not let this conversation be a stigma and just start, you know, just start saying the word period proudly um, mm -hmm. with, without being afraid to say it. And um, just making sure that um, we just continue to get the word out. Um, and I, I believe when it comes to local organizations, um, I've the flow initiative I've, I've been working with the flow initiative um recently over the last over this year and um the collaboration that we have been doing together has actually been very impactful um very great um we've also uh, done so many di different things when it came to young women actually telling their stories and that's what other people need to hear people's yes. story, women's stories what's going on in the community how this has affected because they might hear my voice they may hear your voice but when you hear up close and personal the stories of young girls or women what women has been through the journey of this um i think that definitely will make a big impact because people don't know and i during this journey of going doing this legislation i actually had to educate and i've been educated myself i've had to educate quite a few women other legislators on well this is disorder oh period poverty do exist because they didn't know it really did exist and it is happening and how it, important it is to uh continue to partner with local um, organizations to make sure that young girls in our area have these products absolutely absolutely and and i it's wonderful to know that you have a site in your office. Um, can you share the address of your office just so in case anyone is in need, so they know how to come and access it? Uh, 50 Park Place. Uh, we are right by the Robert Tree Hotel downtown across from um, New Jersey Pack. Okay. Uh, suite one, my picture and my name is right on the outside. So you can, it's right down like three stairs and you can come and ring the bell and come right on in. And again, the YWCA of Northern New Jersey is also a distribution site where you can get free products for um, multiple months at a time. Um, you just have to, we will be sharing more information on our social media, through our e-blasts, and through our website about the how to access, how to make the appointment to pick up the information, and when um, you can drop by and pick that up. Again, it's confidential, um, and not that there's any need to, you know, have any secrecy around it, but nonetheless, it is confidential. And, um, you know, we do encourage you to not only use the ability to access these services, whether it's through the Assemblywoman's office, through our offices, um, or through any of the many other sites that exist. And again, if you go to the Flow Initiative, there's a listing of, you know, sites as well that you can access. Um, because again, you know, this is here for you. I also want to make a plug for maybe a future bill. I think that, you uh, you know, once we get the SNAP benefit thing tweaked, I think that there should be additional money put into households. Um, once we get the SNAP piece fixed that you're working on, there should be additional money put into households for that there's multiple, one or more menstruating, so it doesn't take away from their food benefit to be able to access these services. Okay. So, you know what? So, I won't. Could you type that up and send that over to me? I, and I, I be working on trust and believe. I'm yes, I, I know you are, which is why I'm saying it. And say, um, but uh, I, I think that that's another piece that there's no reason that the food benefit should be um, decreased because there is one or more person in the household that needs, um, you know, needs act, you know, needs access to these products, and it should be able to be a separate um, access of funding. Um, yeah, that's what we was. That's one of the things yeah. we was trying to do yeah. in the bill. 
the food food would stay the same and if it depended on how many girls in the household right a certain amount would be allocated, allocated. For. yes that's exact thank you I, I i think that that is so such an important piece um as well you know we are um oh and uh, um paula our, our viewers asking are these items still taxed no, they're not taxed. Not in they're the state of New Jersey. No. Nope. Good, 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 good. Thank you for asking that question, Paula. That's good. Good question. Good to know the answer to that, for sure. You know, um, there's obviously so much more to talk about, and so much more that will be happening. Um, thank you for sharing how we can support the the legislation that you have out there. Um, again, we will share more information with you how you can get involved. But clearly, what we know as of today is you should start writing to your to who's ever in office for your district, whether or not you voted for them, they work for you, as I always say. Right. Um, make sure that they know as a voter that this is an important issue to you um, and to all the voters in your household and um, be very clear that you would like them to support this initiative to move forward. I also encourage you, if you're part of a faith-based institution, um, if you are part of an organization that you collectively also um, gather signatures um, and put them forward as well to show support for this legislation. Again, the way that um, women's uh, what, is, what is being looked at as a women's issue, but this is a this is a, an issue of really humanity at this point. Um, this is not this should not be kind of stuck in a bucket here. Um, everyone should be concerned about. Um, uh, anyone not being able to live their fullest life because of lack of product and um, any kind of, uh, you know, medical uh, issue that um, happens as a result of menstruation, keeping them from be able, being able to do that. Um, so with that, Assemblywoman, I know we're going to be talking again. And I also know, and I, I will say it here again, and I know that um, I believe you know this, the YWCA stands with you. I personally stand with you. Our, our, our board stands with you. Um, we are here to rally and support these initiatives um, and to make sure that um, our community understands the importance of them and keeping that education piece key. Um, from an advocacy perspective. And we will uh, invite you back to keep talking about how this is moving along and other offshoots of the important work that you've been really keeping um, a highlight to. And i um, so grateful again to you and to your whole team. I know, I know that it's a, it's a team effort. I, I, I was a legislative aide at some point in my career. So I, I, I know, I know what, what, um, you know, what goes on in these offices. It's wonderful to have a leader like you. And I know it's a, it's a team effort for sure to be able to get you to push to do the, the research and the connections for this. And, um, you know, we, we just are very grateful, very grateful for your work. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It definitely was a pleasure. Thank you. And to our viewers, we hope that you can join us tomorrow. As the Assemblywoman noted early in this conversation that obviously, uh, you know, impacted her husband's life and obviously her family's life as well. We will be talking to the president and chief executive officer of the Partnership for Maternal and Child Health of Northern New Jersey. Um, she is an amazing leader here in New Jersey, been working very closely with our first lady on her initiative, and I know the Assemblywoman and others. Um, and uh, she's really moving this work here in New Jersey into a different place, and she's taken over leadership of this uh, important organization. So I'm so happy to be able to have her on and talk about that. Um, again, we are a distribution site. Um, and we please stay connected. Feel free to email us through our social media if you have any questions about it, but we will be pushing out more information over time, you know, for access for sure. And again, as always, there's so many great programs happening at the YWCA. We encourage you to get connected, go check out our website about camp, about our program wellness initiatives for seniors, our sexual violence resource program, um, our program to help um, women and um, especially women of color start small businesses and keep them supported. And of course, our creating safe workplaces in New Jersey for po New Jersey politics, our initiative there. We would love for you to learn more about that as well. So with all of that, we wish everyone a fabulous day. Again, Assemblyman, thank you to you and to your team for the work you're doing, and we look forward to working with you more. Everyone, be well. Thank you. All right. Thank you.